and I'm Shikufu. Uh, today I want to uh, talk about the um, Newton's second law, uh, which is about the unbalanced forces. Um, we talk about the, uh, we have learned about the Newton's first law, and uh, we said that the objects moving on a straight line uh, with a constant speed. Uh, if there is no resultant force acting on them, uh, there is no fo forces acting on them, they just continue uh, on the motion, or if they are at the rest, they remain at rest. Now, in the Newton's second law, we talk about unbalanced forces. Unbalanced means they have net force or the resultant force, and the forces are not equal. So they cause a change in the shape, a change in the direction, cause the object to accelerate or speed up or slow down. Um, so when there are uh, forces which are unbalanced, um, we have uh, acceleration. Acceleration happens when there is a change in the speed of the object. If it changes, if we have changes in the speed uh, when the object is moving, and uh, it keeps changing the speeds um, continuously, so it means that uh, it has an acceleration. Uh, it means that there is a force acting on it, or a net force or resultant force here exists that acts upon uh, the object and causes it to. Uh, change is uh, velocity or have acceleration. The acceleration has a direct um, relationship or depends directly on the um, force or the net force or the resultant force. What does that mean? It means that um, if there is a net force acting on of the objects, if the force increases, if the force, net force increases, the acceleration also will become more and more. So the higher, the, the more the force, the higher the acceleration of the object. So they are directly depend, depending on each other. Um, the next thing is that there is another factor, which is the mass of the object. And uh, the relationship between the mass of the object and acceleration of the object is indirect or it is, uh, it is inversely uh, depending on the mass of the object. So acceleration is somehow indirectly related to the mass. It means the higher the mass, the less the acceleration or what's worse I mean, it can be the lower the mass, the higher uh, the acceleration. So the formula is that the resultant force of net force equals to mass times acceleration, acceleration of the object. So, or you can write as you can write as acceleration equals to force net force over mass of the object. Net force is measured in newtons, so mass should be in kilograms in this formula, and acceleration meters per second squared. So, I repeat again, the resultant force or the net force can be calculated by mass of the object times acceleration, where you can calculate the acceleration of the object by force net force acting on the object divided by mass of the object. What are the units of each um, quantity? The net force is measured in newtons. Mass should be in kilograms. Acceleration should be in meter per second squared. We understood what this Newton's second law is talking about. It's all about the unbalanced forces that cause an object to accelerate. So, under Newton's third law, we call it as an action and reaction, actually. It's talking about that an object cannot actually exert a force on another object without itself um, not experiencing um, any uh, 
uh, in force. If we have an object and we call it as A, if it exerts a force on object B, this is B, okay? If there is a force acting on the B from A, so, then B must exert a force on back on the A, object A, I show with another color. I use another color to show. Another force must be exerted on A, which is in the opposite direction to the first one, the first force, which is exerted by A on B. And with the same size and in the opposite direction. So if A, object A, exerts a force on object B, then B must exert a force on A which is equal uh, size, in the equal size and in the opposite direction to the uh, back on the object A. There are two examples that I have given to you here. For example, there is a football player um, trying to beat the ball, the football. He is exerting a force on the ball, he's pushing it. For example, the force that the player is exerting on the ball is 100 newtons, and it is to the right. Okay, so from ball, which is another object, also should be a reaction. The reaction is a force in the opposite direction to the action force, but with the same size. So the size of the force is the same, but the direction is different. So most of them are 100 newtons. But this one is to the right and this one is to the left. This one from the shoe to the ball, and the next one, the reaction is from the ball to the shoe of the player. Another one, we have a cannon, a cannon and a cannonball. Okay, when it is fired, it try, uh, the, this ball actually uh, has an action. The action is that the cannon uh, shoots the ball uh, and exerting a force, which is 2,000 newton on the ball. And ball also will exert a force in the opposite direction of the same size, which is 2,000 newtons on the cannon. So in the Newton third law, we say that the uh, always the forces come in the pairs, the words in pairs. And um, if an object exerts uh, a force on another object, that object also must exert a force back on that object, but in the same size and in a different and opposite direction.